The last time I filmed a rig tour, it took me probably seven or eight months of traveling before I finally got around to filming the video. This time, I've only been on the road about a month and Zora and I have stayed in the rig probably eight or nine nights. So not too much, but just enough to have a solid first impression of what we think about the new setup. So we're gonna give you guys a tour today. If you are brand new here, I have a couple of things to tell you. Number one, I don't normally sound like this. I have a cold right now, so bear with me. And number two, my name is Grace and I travel with a nine month old Belgian Malinois puppy named Zora. You will probably hear me call her Moose or Gator most of the time, but her real name is Zora. Now that we have all that fun stuff out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the new setup. There is definitely an overarching theme to this new build and that is minimalism. There is not really anything extra in this setup. Even things that I would have considered necessary in my previous setup are no longer in this setup. I will walk you through every single thing that I took out because I didn't really add anything and I will tell you if I think it was a good or bad decision. So one of the big decisions that I had to face with taking the build out was whether or not I wanted to also take the passenger seat of my vehicle out. It would give me more space, but I wasn't convinced that I would not miss that seat. And I'm honestly really glad that I left the seat in because Zora likes to lounge on that side. So it gives her a little bed. In this box, I keep her slow feed bowl, a couple different types of food and lick mats, and just a bunch of other miscellaneous toys. Gonna try and stick her head in the food bag. She knows what's in there. We'll go ahead and close that back up. There's two things that I absolutely could not live without having Zora on the road, and that is her 15 foot leash and her 50 foot leash. Those two leashes give her much more freedom than she would otherwise have. I'm not always 100% sure that I wanna let her off leash in any off leash dog areas, just because I don't know the local dogs. I'm not sure who's friendly and who is not, and I don't want to have any situations. So I typically keep Zora on leash even in off-leash designated areas because it makes me feel better. And she's still able to have plenty of freedom because usually she has her 50-foot leash on. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I took out a bunch of stuff from my car. One of those things that I took out was my water cans. I started on the road in May of 2021 with 10 gallons of water. It then became five gallons of water and it's now just a couple of Nalgene's. My reasoning behind this is that I never really used my additional water because I was always in town. I go to the gym every single day. I'm a bit of a gym rat and usually I go more than once. So that means I am always filling up my Nalgene's. I didn't really need the extra water. I honestly have not missed those water cans at all. They took up so much space and I never used them. So having just my Nalgene's works just fine for me and my lifestyle. I understand that some people will say it's not smart of me from a safety standpoint to not have a bunch of extra water, but if I am going to go out into the backcountry and be without services for an extended period of time, I do plan on getting a collapsible five or six gallon cube from REI or Walmart or wherever I can find one but I didn't want to have to deal with the cans that were not collapsible anymore. That is everything from the front seat. So we'll go ahead and hop to the other room and talk about all of the changes in the back. And there are a lot. Now that we made the arduous journey to the other room, I did want to point out the most notable change first, and that is Zora's kennel. It is an intermediate size gunner kennel and honestly this has been one of my best purchases to date. I knew when I got Zora that I wanted to get a crate. It was just a matter of waiting for her to grow up a little bit so I could see approximately what size she was going to be because I didn't want to have to purchase twice. These kennels are not cheap but they are well worth the investment. It is much safer for both the dog and for myself for her to be in a crate while we are driving. In a crash that occurs at about 35 miles an hour, a dog the size of Zora can turn into a 2,700 pound projectile. That is not something I want flying towards me or towards the windshield or anywhere in this car. So she stays in here when we are driving. That is the biggest addition to this car and I think it's been a good one. Although this build did steal a lot of my space, 
what it did give me is a lot of head clearance. I can now sit comfortably with like a foot above my head and I can change, I can move around, gives me a place to work and not have to go into a coffee shop or a park. It's been awesome, honestly, having this additional space back here. I do miss the build at times, but I would take this space. Moving on in our tour of the new setup, I am now sitting directly behind the driver's seat and this is where I store my food bag that contains all of my food and my cooking stuff, which is in this little container. I will give you a look inside in just a second. Before I show you the cooking stuff, I did want to talk about the fact that when I said all of my food is in the food bag, it is because I no longer have a fridge. I took the fridge out, it took up too much space, I didn't have any more room to give. So the fridge is no longer in the car. I miss the fridge so much. I might get a cooler, but I don't really think I want to deal with the ice. So we'll stick to cool climates so I don't have to refrigerate anything or keep anything cool beyond just the car's temperature. So if I can get the moose out of the way, I try to put this here so she wouldn't jump back here and she jumped back here anyways. <laughs> we have my cutlery set that I could absolutely not live without. Couple plates, couple bowls, pans, and my jet boil and a scale and that is it. I don't have a big stove, I just am using my jet boil, but that's not really too much of a challenge. I almost forgot to mention that I no longer have my power station either. So my power station was primarily there to charge my fridge. When I got rid of the fridge, the power station also had to go because it was also very large. It was a 3000 watt goal zero and really overkill if I didn't have the fridge. This is what it looks like behind the driver's seat. So food bag, as I said, cooking stuff under there. This is just dirty laundry. And this is all of my supplements. So protein powders, collagen, creatine, stuff like that. On the other side, this is my shoe storage. And then as you can see, I have a 15 pound kettlebell, a 10 pound weight plate and a 20 pound plate. Moving on to this, what looks like a mess. This is everything that is beside the kennel. First we have my work bag, a bunch of hoodies because that's pretty much all I wear. And then computer bag, camera bag, more camera stuff, gym bag, Zora's little sleeping mat, and then all of my sleep stuff. So down quilt, rumple blanket, sleeping pad. I'm going to be getting another sleeping pad. It is the Xtherm, NeoAir Xtherm. I have it, it's at home. I used it for the first six months of road life before I got my X-Bed mattress. I don't mind it, it just sounds like a potato chip bag, so I stopped using it. It's very warm and I will be adding that back to this current setup. And then my pillow. You should see this mess. And finally, beside the kennel, I'm not going to move this, I'm just gonna show you because it, this is kind of heavy. I have a 60 pound sandbag from GoRuck, and then I also have a tabletop desk. I love the desk. This has been one of the best additions to the car. Got it for Christmas, and I use it every single day, multiple times a day. I'm also going to cook on that now instead of the center console. How does that sound? And I am not going to show you all of the stuff over here because that is the equivalent of my junk drawer. Those are all of the big changes to the setup. The things I didn't show you, my clothing, I store it in front of the kennel under a rug in packing cubes. So it kind of creates a floor for me having all of my clothes under there. I would show you, but it is covered in dog food right now because Zora is going through a shedding phase. So you don't get to see that today. The other big change that I haven't talked about at all is that I took all of my hobby stuff 
out of the car with the exception of a pair of snowshoes. So backpacking gear, rock climbing gear, there's absolutely no skiing stuff. All of my hobby gear is gone. That was a pretty big sacrifice for me, but I simply did not have the space for stuff that I was not going to use every single day. I think that wraps up the tour of the new setup. I hope you enjoyed it. As a closing note, I do want to point out the obvious. I recognize this is quite small and there are many things that I could do to improve my storage, mainly in the form of rooftop storage and things outside of the vehicle. However, this is a small vehicle. That fact is not going to change and I need a little bit more space for the dog and I. So I will not be staying in this vehicle. I do plan on searching for a new rig. So sorry to disappoint you if you're here for Forerunner content. This is not going to happen immediately. It will be a process and I will take you along on the journey with me. So it should be a fun time and thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.